All right, welcome back. Episode three of the Keep, Keep Rolling, Rolling Podcast. Podcast. Here we are, Zach. How are you? Good, thanks, Hordo. How are you? Very well. How's training? Yeah, not too bad. Consistent? Semi-consistent. Picked up an extra day this week. What <laughs> That's about you? right, because you're not working. <laughs> um, I'm aiming for two a week. I've got two, uh, two a week fits my schedule, yep. three if I'm lucky. Yeah. I got a Saturday, Sunday in yet last week. I trained last night, and then I'll probably look at hopefully Saturday and Sunday again. Oh, good. Mm. Yeah, okay. Well, I just I just need to be consistent, more consistent than what I've been. Yeah. But I am dealing with a troublesome shoulder <laughs> after coming back. So that's that's our topic for today: is the shoulder girdle. Yeah. Um, shoulder injury, particularly. Probably we'll break down injury by injury, but we might dive into um, certain aspects of it today. Yep. Um, you keep moving around, I'm going to slump in here. Um, so yeah, I, I came, after Jude was born, come back after having been training for about 12 weeks or so, and fairly inconsistently just through the start of the year. But coming back, I think it was, it was a week of doing some Kimuras and some Omoplatas and left shoulder didn't like it yeah. and it still doesn't like it yeah you can see the way you're moving it around uh, but um, I haven't been a good patient one <laughs> I haven't been consistent with my re, re or haven't really kind of dived into my rehab which we're going to talk about today yeah but I still want to while I can get to train I'm still going to training yeah so last night even when we were drilling started training couldn't really do it because the shoulder was too sore. And then I can roll, like take a bit of heat out of the rolling, but yep. I'll just play on that left side so I'm not moving the shoulder. Yeah. And I know, you talk, talk to me about coming back from your dislocation. How do you, do, has that changed how you oh, roll massively. now? Massively. Are you protective? Very much so. Um, yeah, very much so. Uh, I tend to play on my left side with my hand at my chest yeah. the whole time. Yeah. Uh, I never extend, so I don't go for underhooks on that side. I'm never coming up on an underhook with my left. Yeah. If I'm going to do that, it's my right. Mm. I hardly ever post on it. I'll just get swept and then try to keep going with the momentum. But I'm yeah. never putting it down. I'm never reaching for it. It's not my lead hand if I'm going for a choke. Yeah. Um, yeah, I very much protect it. It's a mental thing for me, I think. Yeah. Two years on. Two years on. But... um. I definitely get what you yeah what you mean in there where you say you just want to lay on it and hide it from someone. So we touch base. Oh. We touch base with you first episode. Yeah. Um, so 2020 was your surgery. Yeah. So for anyone, for the five people that listen to that episode, um, <laughs> <laughs> dislocation, recurrent dislocation. Yeah. Um, ended up with J. Yeah. And rehab period. How long? Probably about a year. I, I got it. I got it good enough. I didn't get it. Yeah. Back fully. Yeah. Yeah. Started rehabbing it again over the last few weeks. What What's the downfall? Like, where do you, Where do you feel you got to percentage wise? Maybe seventy odd percent. Yeah. I got to the point that I could comfortably do pull ups. Yeah. Um. I got to the point that I could do a muscle up. Um. My pressing strength is nothing. Mm. Um. But overhead just, or overhead. Yeah. Bench press. Nothing. That's mm. half the reason why I hold, hold it here from the bottom of the side. I'm mm. just like, I'm holding it there. I'm not trying to. Yeah. I don't want to. I should have frames. If you're doing jujitsu, you should have frames. I just don't frame with it. I don't, yeah. I don't want the don't want force on it. Yeah. Um, so working on getting that back. Mm. Um, what's going on with yours? Yeah. I, it's just an old shot. <laughs> yeah. My history is I broke my wrist on this side yeah. in 2010. So 12 years ago, had a shitty kind of management of it ended up going to surgery but it was casted for a total of about 18 weeks is this scaphoid scaphoid fracture yeah so it was managed poorly initially they casted me like it was a scaphoid fracture that was in the watershed area should have gone to should have gone straight to surgery basically Mm -hmm. but it was managed with a cast i wasn't a physio yet i think i was i must have still been um training but it was casted six weeks still not healed in casted me again six weeks still okay. not healed let's go to the surgeon surgeon goes you should come to me they die yeah. 
he put a pin in it, and then I was in a cast again post surge. So were you twelve weeks before I got pinned? Mm. Wow. So lucky in, in the sense, I guess, that it's not necrotic. I haven't had a scan on it or anything for a long time. But a lot of like just that amount of immobilization gives way to like some arthritic change and stuff like that, yep. which I notice I don't have full range in that extension. Mm. So any push up since then is always hard. Any when I was doing like weightlifting and stuff like that, it was always hard to get into the rack position. Mm -hmm. No matter how like and again, probably how much how consistent was I with the post kind of op rehab. I was pretty good and I continued to do it but I just didn't get full range back in the wrist. Yeah. And it's probably just from the joint changes. Um so that kind of led me to then this shoulder being, I think, based on this grip strength in this side and the ability to load into like that fully oh, yeah. locked out position that the shoulder suffers yeah. in terms of stability point of view, especially in closed chain yeah. positions. Um, and it's always felt in jits if we're doing Americana, if someone's putting in Americana or mostly into that position, but then even this position into Kimuras or Amaplatas, it just doesn't feel like it's got the stability there. Yep. So again, my my kind of strength program when I was when I'm training isn't to, it, it's more based just around like the large compound movements. So for the shoulder, it's like vertical and overhead, uh, uh, yep. vertical horizontal push, pull motions, and based off today and what we're going to dive in today is probably both of us would be good to go through our our actual like screening of the shoulder yep. to see well one i don't have pain free range at the moment so i'm not getting past stage one but yep. things like um peak force testing for the cuff in different positions yep. um athletic shoulder tests just differences side to side would be interesting to me for both of us yep. um grip strength i think my grip strength would be pretty poor like generally i think so like trying to work like yeah. strategies around like carries and different things to improve that yeah um and then things like um power and strength endurance in the cuff itself and then like just upper limb power and strength i think those measures if we can kind of or and some closed chain testing yeah it'd be interesting for us to go through that particularly the history and the history yeah to see where we sit and then start to work out a rehab plan around it mm -hmm. because I've got it. I'm lucky you're saying before, I was, I was saying last night, I was, I was rolling one of the young kids that was at jiu-jitsu and I was like, I can't, I was trying to drill. I was like, oh, you just go because I, I can't get into like, we're doing the waiter sweep or whatever and I just uh, couldn't yeah. get into it. Yeah, yeah. And um, I said, oh, that's right, well, you just go for it. And then when we're rolling, he's like, oh, do you want me to, oh, oh, which shoulder is it? And I'm like, don't worry about it, I'll just, play around it i'll just that's kind of said to me on the weekend <laughs> yeah well that's that's how i did and i end yeah. up i end up just playing here yeah but that's not my long-term strategy right i'm yeah. like man i'm trying to lift up and get things out of the top shelf at the moment i'm like come on like yeah. you're gonna have better shoulders than this so yeah okay um so yeah i think we need to dive into yeah, okay. the assessment on it yep um and then the plant like the numbers i, I think the numbers are, are critical for for me in terms of like understanding how how far below or how much of a deficit this side is comparative. Yep. Um, so I'd be interested to see when we test. Oh, so am I. I um, I'm always really interested, especially around that stuff. It's like, is your shoulder, when we test it, I'm gonna assume your left shoulder is gonna be very, very down to what yeah. the right one what, what, uh, is. Is it down because it hurts or is it down because it's injured? Did it get injured because it's weaker? Yeah. Like it's always, yeah. Um, obviously, you've said there's a history of your scaphoid uh, fracture. Um, yeah, obviously, so push-ups would have been something that's yeah. an issue for you. How'd you go with, because um, you said you, you're lacking a bit of range. Were you, were you much of a squatter? Because you've got to get a decent amount of yeah. external rotation for that. Like, not heaps in the last few years. Yeah, okay. Um, maybe turn your mic the other way up. See how the mic's pointed oh, sure. Um At least it's in there. Um, it always. We can go inside with it. Yeah, that way it won't fall out. 
Oh yeah. That's uh, good. I think that'd be right. We'll I mean, do a button up. No, no, that's all right. Um, I was, but difficult to to kind of get comfortable in that yep. that position. Not too bad, like in a back squat. Yeah. Um, front squat was always difficult in the rack position, like I said. Yeah. So always probably more comfortable if I had a safety. I never squatted with a safety bar, but like a safety bar or yep. a goblet squat or something like that. Yeah. Work around it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think um, for me there was no injury. That that that's a thing. Like it is just sore post jujitsu, yeah. and I think if you throw in. To me, to me, the assessment like on it, I'm like, yeah, it's it's very much just a like a cuff related yep. issue. I think the yep. verse is pretty angry in there, um, particularly at the front, um, and it's just typical. It's kind of like get to ninety, can get up into full flexion eventually, like painful arc. But yep. um, I think based on everything that's gone on, say in the last three months, it's like come back to training, sleeping shitty, yeah. like not training as consistently in the gym, everything kind of just led towards this not being great. Yep. But it's interesting, like, because I remember when I did it and even now when I'm like, I'm like, fuck that, I just don't have any range. I'm like, what's that, what are these cuff tendons like? Yeah. But when I test power at neutral, I'm like, the cuff's fine. It's yeah, just okay. super irritating. Then I keep going back to jiu-jitsu and like, yeah, there's. I think my what I need to be doing is go. Okay, we're rolling. No, I'll just I just got to watch. Yeah, well, sort of. I agree well, with you, but I don't. I think what you've said is yeah. you've excluded tendons in neutral. We yeah. probably haven't done any major serious injury. Mm. Um, we know it's caused probably from an increase in your loading. Mm. Going back off is not going to help that situation. It might settle it down, settle the pain down. But yeah. do we just maybe need to bring down your intensity? You said you're going a bit lighter. If we do that, target a few things specifically and then gradually build up rather than going, oh, I can't do it, I have to watch. Yeah. Well, you, I think... The body's not going to adapt if we're yeah. not training, but also we need it to settle down too. There's an element that I'm just hanging in phase one, like yeah. where it's like, for, so for phase one, it, for us, it's like settle. Yeah. Settle the inflammatory period, settle the pain down, get range back, start working to phase two to restore range and whatever and stage three build but yeah. it feels like i'm just hanging in that in that kind yeah. of like oh it's getting a little bit better like even last night i was like shoulders actually start like so this from sunday to wednesday i was like shoulders feeling all right and it was like yeah. six o'clock i was like i could go to jiu-jitsu tonight yeah. and then i roll and then i come back and i'm like oh man i'm just dead back <laughs> up and i'm just in a cycle at the moment yeah where i just need to break that first part allow enough sort of time for that inflamed phase to settle yeah. and then build appropriately from a, like a rehab standpoint to, and I think like if I was, if I was coming in, if I was a patient in front of me where I was like, um, all right, I'm a jujitsu, I, I do jujitsu twice, three times a week, yeah. I've injured my shoulder, this is where it's at, I'd be like, okay, phase one, we just want to settle that down. I want you to get pain-free range yeah. before you even saying that we're going back to rolling. I want pain-free range and I want to test the cuff to make sure that like we've got output that's decent comparative to the other side and we can start you on that um, first phase of getting back to rolling. Exactly what you said. Yeah. That phase is probably bring the intensity down, yeah. controlled environment, not chaotic. Yeah. We're doing what we can within our, our capacity. Yeah and then we're building week on week. Yeah. But the problem that I'm doing is I'm going from here to here, yeah. and then coming back down to here, yeah. where we need, I need to be kind of following my own advice. <laughs> well, because yeah, we don't, we don't take yeah, our own advice. It's like Wilco yeah. on Sunday, he's like, mate, you, you've got this, you've got a yeah. bum shoulder, like, yeah. sort yourself out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's it. But it, the trade-off, and like I said on Sunday, it's like, if I've got time to go, I want to go. Yeah. And my personality is like, is not the type to go and then sit on the side and, and watch. I'm like, I want to get involved, but yeah. I understand now. I'm, I'm just getting too much into that chaotic environment or that like yeah. end stage return. You're a competitive guy too, mm. so yeah. How, it, when you're rolling, does it start to feel better? Oh, it's just like, you forget about it. Yeah. So like, but yeah. I'll understand. Like, that doesn't help. Dan, like, he, 
he got me in something the other day, on Sunday, uh-huh. and I tapped. Oh, like I had to tap. I looked. I think it was like a a version of like getting end range external rotation, like an Americana yeah. type thing. I don't know where I was wrapped up somewhere. <laughs> I think it was like he was playing playing like an armbar triangle kind of situation. Yeah. And as he's pulling the arm, I'm like tapping here. I was like tap 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 here because I had nothing. Yeah. No, I knew that if if he if it went any further, I'm yeah. like man, I'm gonna. I'm just going to make it more irritating. Just stir it up more. Yeah. Yeah. So, that, like, that's it. I know if it gets compromised, like, even, like you said, framing and stuff on that last night, I'm, like, yeah. got in positions in the bottom where I'm, like, oh, man, I really need to kind of, like, the position I'm in, I need to get back to yeah. get my guard back. And I'm, like, man, I can't push to the sides. I'm, like, what do I do? Well, I noticed that on Sunday. Yeah. But we, we obviously rolled on Sunday um, from rolling a few with you in the past, you're a big fan of, I don't know what it's called, post out, hip skate, walk yeah. yourself away. You didn't do it once. Yeah. You did not want to have oh, that arm yeah, out yeah, in front yeah. of you. Yeah, as no. I was passing, you just like accepted it. Yeah. Whereas I, usually I'm expecting this thing to come out and stiff arm me. <laughs> well, I, I just can't. I, yeah. And if I load up, I'm like, oh. Yeah. And that's it. That's the element of like acceptance that you got to have. It's like, yeah. And you, it's, it's painful. Like, just accepting it mm. and having it happen because you're like, man, my shoulder sucks. At yeah. <laughs> but it's all the more reason that we need to get it, get did, it back, right? Did I get tapped in the roll because I got a sore shoulder or, did, or do I just suck? <laughs> <laughs> I just suck. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, but the moral of the story is like, again, like we were saying, we yeah. get a check, get it yes, assessed, get absolutely. a rehab plan. Yeah. It's the plan in place. And like everything, it's be consistent with it. Consistency is massive because doing a week of something is not going to get you anywhere. Like typically, this should be a four-week yeah. injury, to from when it's happened, and I've neglected it in the sense where I'm like, no, oh, I'll be alright. I'll just kind of get yeah. done, and I'm still at I'm still at week zero basically yeah. because of it. So, plan in place now will be all right. Assessment from you, treat treatment plan. Yep. And then we'll run through obviously the all the return testing that I think is a, a good indicator for us to get back. Yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, it's all right. Cool. Where do you feel your game's at now? Compare like, yeah, right. where do you feel you're at percentage post shoulder reconstruction compared to pre? Yeah, I don't know. That's a hard one because I reckon I've just adapted around mm. it. I think I've just, it's been enough time that I've figured out what I can do and avoided what I can't or I'm not confident with. Yeah. Um, to the point that I've got a, I've got my, my A game, my stuff that I do, and I'm pretty damn confident I can do it mm. on most people. <laughs> What's your A game? <laughs> <laughs> Triangles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Triangles, uh, bottom half guard. Uh, a reverse scissor sweep, yeah, um, things like that, really. Uh, and I you feel pretty damn confident on that, unless they're a black belt. Yeah, I think I said to you the other day, is my jujitsu. My jujitsu is good until I fight until I fight a black belt. And <laughs> yeah. I just get walloped. Yeah. Um, well, it should be if you're a brown belt fighting. Yeah. Below you. Yeah. To it's, some degree. Yeah. Well. Just. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's just annoying. <laughs> But I'm very, I, I'm very interested. Where would I be if I'd never hurt this? Because I would have had a year on the mat still. Mm. Never would have had that off. Um, yeah, I don't know. Probably would have competed. Yeah, so we talked about this the other day. Not going to compete? Oh, God, no. No. Uh, no. It's not worth the risk, really. Mm. I'd like to, but I'm not going to. Yeah. 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 But I don't know. That's an interesting question. So, um, yeah, I think you're right. I think that it's just an adapt adaptation right and and the big thing post injury i think is if it if you make sure you don't quit like because it's a very i I think we talked about in one of the other episodes around the return to sport post injury is like not a lot of people get back to pre-injury yeah like not a lot of people get up to pre-injury competition level like so for the elites and things like that elite athletes or whatever even community it's like they do their ACL or something, or they do their shoulder. Yeah. Do they get back to 
the level that they were playing at yeah, last time. Yeah. And a lot of them just, you, you're right, the, quest, the question is, well, what's it worth? Like, mm. is the risk worth the reward? But I think with something like jiu-jitsu, it's right, you just adapt around it, and that's, that's yeah. the problem-solving game. It's like... That's it. I mean, for you, like, you know, I wanted to compete like, at local things. Yeah. Risk hurting my shoulder for a plastic gold medal. <laughs> Bronze or whatever it is. Or, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. jiu-jitsu for the next 20, 30-odd years. And yeah, that's keep, true. Keep on top of things. It just that's wasn't true. worth it. And that, you know, I could be a world champion. Well, I'm not. So, why 35, bother competing? Mate. Maybe... Masters Worlds. <laughs> Masters, mate. Yeah. No. Um, your shoulder injury, actually, you've just reminded, I don't know how, but, um, yeah, one of, the, one of the guys from our gym came in, same thing. Yeah. So, hadn't been rolling that hard, training for a comp, four or yeah. five times a week rolling off the back of maybe twice. Yeah. Yeah, shoulder cocked it, struggling to lift overhead, yeah. really painful, if anything, internal, massive loss of internal, ro- uh, external rotation strength. Yeah. Rehab? Yep. Yeah, bit of strength work, coming good. Still uh, still getting in there. Oh, uh, how long? Uh, we had only about three weeks because he came in three weeks before the comp. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, um, yeah same, same thing. Massive load spike on the background yeah. of not as much. Body doesn't tolerate it. Something gets sore. Um, and exactly what you said, we excluded anything major. Yeah. Got the range back, built some strength in neutral, started building up intensity from there. Yeah. I think um, the the combat like also for me like the end range positions as well. Yeah. It just I don't know maybe the bo- like just not being there for a, a while is not you don't spend much time. Yeah. Kind of unless I'm reaching behind the cart to the kids and things like that. And I noticed yesterday when I was trying to give something to Flinny in the back of the car, I was like, oh yeah. man, I can't do this. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that that exposure to end range positions where it's just like, oh man, we haven't had this for a while. Yeah. And it just flares up and it's also, I guess what's, uh, what's some takeaways if we're thinking of people that are, you gotta watch it, yeah. listen to it. Um, what, are we, what are we thinking takeaways? I think, I was talking to Davo last night at training. Good old Davo. Yeah. Uh, and we're just, we're just talking about Longevity, because obviously we're we're both in the plus thirty five category. <laughs> and just talking about like longevity and stuff, and yep. talking about shoulders and just yep. everything, and it's just we're talking about all right. Well, like, what are you doing? What are your big rocks that you can take care of that make sure that you are healthy on the mats and you. Stay on the mat so you keep rolling. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> um, but like, what are what are the big rocks? So what are the big ticket things that you can do, like from a shoulder standpoint, that will keep you on the mats? And I think the number one thing is like keeping mobility. You see a lot of yeah. guys that lose mobility and they're like they don't have the ability the, to the move their joint more. through range. End range rotation. They just leave it. Yeah. It's going, ah, oh, it's a stiff shoulder. Yeah. Okay, maybe you could have addressed this when it first happened. Yeah. You'd have your mobility back. Because then if you if you lose mobility and yeah. you also then aren't using the shoulder in its full range of motion, like you, you get this compromise of how that cuff functions to stabilize. Yeah. So you got this trade-off that becomes like a mobility issue or a combination mobility stability issue or was it a stability issue that then caused a mobility issue because yeah. you, you can't stabilize that glenohumeral joint was inherently a pretty large kind of ball surface area on a pretty narrow fossa. Yeah. So there's that trade-off of like getting it kind of, getting a plan in place early when it happens to maintain your mobility, stability, motor control as like a, as a first thing. And then onto that is like, what's your strengthening, what's your strength training look like are you targeting, what are the big things that you could target for the shoulder? So a lot of people like me, probably doing just some some presses, some yeah. bench, some pre- overhead press, maybe some row variations, some chins, which is great, use the, the yeah. shoulder as a whole. But then those supplementary exercises that be really good for people, particularly in jiu-jitsu, to, to really target um, the 
the strength of the calf, the output, like the peak force development yep. of the calf, um, and then also like the endurance, because I think endurance yep. is an important part. And then if you're doing those big ticket things like, so mobility, cuff in different positions, different kind of variations, strength as a general, yeah. like upper limb function, power. I think it's a good recipe for keeping the shoulder girdle healthy. Yeah, Throw absolutely. in some scap mobility, like scap control and whatever, but yeah. thoracic mobility in those is like your sup supplementary things. But I think um, your big ticket, if you're looking to keep healthy shoulders, is those probably three things yeah. from my end. I definitely agree. Mm. I think the accessory stability stuff super important. You mentioned um, things like pull-ups, chins, um, bench pressing. I think what's important to remember too, is, uh, especially for hobbyists, you get tired, yeah. quality goes down, you just want to get through it. Yeah. So if you're doing a pull-up, for example, and you, you, you feel like you're restricted in your mobility, maybe they're not reaching a full or close to dead hang. They're getting yeah. partial range and they're working. So they, you feel like you're ticking it off. But you could do more in, in what you're already doing without having to make a massive change. Mm. Kind of em like embrace the suck mm. kind of part of it. Yeah. You know, work at what you're not good at rather than trying to keep working yeah. the same things that you've already ticked off before. Yeah. I think that's probably a massive part. Well, maybe not massive. I think that's part of something that can be addressed mm. in a lot of people's injury prevention is, yeah. Yeah. Getting to the part that they're not comfortable, confident in and building that up too. Yeah. Yeah. And I think also throw in there the closed chain stuff that we talked yep. about, because yep. like the posting and all of all of that, yep. exposing your shoulder, upper limb girdle, your shoulder girdle, your upper limb to the closed chain, closed chain positions. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's there's some things in there like from a programming standpoint that I love, like a lot of the kettlebell stuff. So your get ups and mm. things for Control, not for the closed chain stuff, but for the like controlling weight overhead and moving the body underneath the weight yep. and kind of through different ranges. I couldn't, like right now, Yeah, I'd be kind of quarter get up or whatever it is, just yep. we can go through. Um, all the, the compound movement stuff that facilitate strength and yep. whatever that we're talking about and the bench and the pulls and everything. But then like with any, a lot of our rehab stuff that, there was the, the trend away from isolated kind of strengthening and stuff. Like in, mm. you look at the, we talked about the ACLs last time and it's like the trend away was, oh no, just do everything functional because functional yeah. will do it. But like post-injury and if you, if you understand where your deficits are based off testing mm. or advice from someone that is testing you, then you can isolate where you, where you, you kind of weaknesses are or your deficits are. So thinking yeah. of the shoulder girdle uh, in comparison to like our ACL rehab, it's like one of the big, the, one of the things I love is the, just the little force plate that we use to look at peak force output yeah. in, the, in the cuff. Mostly, like I use it mostly at neutral, but then you've got your athletic shoulder tests that I love as well, especially for jujitsu if you think yeah. of combat and the ability to pr produce force in those IT and Y positions. Yep. It's a great test and then um, probably at 90 as well. And there's, there's three tests that yep. you can isolate and go, well, what more can we be doing from an isolated, strengthening, targeted kind of viewpoint that marries up well to our general strength and conditioning principles? Um, and then what other areas are we working on from like a deficit? like? Does the person need more thoracic mobility, better scap mm. control, better scap motor control that you can add as a supplement to what they're doing? Mm. So that would be that would be my kind of thing, and maybe we can go through testing and rehab stuff um, as well. Cool. I'm spewing that we lost that. I know. Um, do we dive into injury or leave that for another one? I think that's keep for another one. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. Well, um, let's film some. Let's film some shoulder stuff. Do some assessments. Let's and, start your rehab. Yeah. <laughs> let's do it. All right. Um, you got, you want to close it? What do we say? Follow or see? Subscribe. Like and subscribe. <laughs>
Just go down down the bottom right. Down here. Down there. Yeah. Hit the, the red button that says subscribe if you're on YouTube. Give us a give us a like. If you're watching on uh, Instagram as well, give us a like. It helps us out. Tell yes. us you're interested and you want us to keep going. <laughs> yes. Leave us some questions. If you've got any questions, yeah, just big one. throw us some questions. Um, yeah, I think we mentioned three. We need to we need to invest in some equipment, buddy. Yeah. Losing our film. <laughs> <laughs> it's only episode three. Yeah. Uh, all right. Keep rolling.